Welcome to iLecture Online. Another remarkable tendon and muscle in our body is the Achilles tendon in the back of the heel attached to the calf muscle, which supports typically your entire weight when you're jumping or sprinting or running on your toes. Assume at this moment you have your heel elevated from the ground, your entire weight is on one single foot, 800 newtons, the entire weight of the person, about an 80 kilogram weight person. Um, the distance from where the bone attaches to the pivot point in the back of your foot here to your toes is 18 centimeters. The distance from where your toes, toes touch the ground to where your Achilles tendon is attached to the bone in the back is 25 centimeters. Let's say your toe is elevated at 15 degrees and the Achilles tendon makes an angle of 20 degrees with the vertical as it's wrapped around the bone and is attached to your calf. What is the tension in the Achilles? What is the force required by the Achilles tendon to hold yourself in position like that on one single foot? Well, let's find out again. We use the concept of torques. We know that when things are in equilibrium, the sum of all the torques about the point, let's call this point A, about point A must add up to zero. If we take our pivot point right there, which is our pivot point right there, we do not have to worry about the force of the bones pushing down against the foot. We only have two forces now which cause a torque, which is the ground pushing back against the foot in this direction and the Achilles tendon pulling in this direction. So we have a counterclockwise pull or torque in this direction. We have a clockwise pull in that direction and they should counterbalance one another out. When we add them all up, starting with the 800 Newton force, so we have an 800 Newton force pushing against the foot like this, which causes a clockwise direction, that must be a minus torque, so that's a minus 800 newtons, times the perpendicular distance from the line of action of the force to the pivot point, which is distance, let's call it distance run right there, we'll call that distance one. Now we have the force of the Achilles tendon, that would be plus the force of the Achilles tendon, because this will cause a counterclockwise torque, that's a positive torque, times the perpendicular distance from the line of action of the force to the pivot point that would be right here. So that's the distance that we're looking for, and this would be distance two. I know that's kind of small right there, but we'll draw it a little bit bigger so you can see what that looks like. So right now we need to find distance one and distance two. Distance one is probably a little bit easier. Notice that this from there to there is 18 centimeters. We know that this angle is 15 degrees, which means that this angle is 15 degrees as well. And distance one here is adjacent to this angle. So therefore to find distance one, it would be the length 18 centimeters times the cosine of 15 degrees. So the sum of the torques about point A is equal to zero, which is equal to 800 newtons times distance one, which is 18 centimeters times the cosine of 15 degrees, plus the force caused by the Achilles tendon times distance two. Now to find distance two, we need to redraw this. We need to draw this right here, and we have this distance here from there to there, and we know that's going to be 25 centimeters minus 18 centimeters, which is seven centimeters. So from there to there is seven centimeters. Notice we have this at an angle of 20 degrees. Now, rather than using the old method, the method here where we find distance two, we can try a different method. The method I showed a few videos ago, when we have a beam like this, and we have a force attached to the beam, let's call this force caused by the Achilles tendon, and it makes an angle of phi relative to the vertical. Now notice if this is lifted at an angle of 15 degrees and this is at 20 degrees relative to the vertical, that means that this direction of this force makes a five degree angle relative to the vertical relative to the foot. So this would become a five degree angle. So instead of calling this FA times D2, what I'm going to do instead is I'm going to call this plus FA times the cosine of the angle between the vertical relative to the foot and the direction of the force, which in this case would be five degrees. And of course, times the distance from the pivot point to there along the beam, in this case along the foot, so times seven centimeters. Now we're ready to plug all that in, so F sub A times seven centimeters 
times the cosine of 5 degrees. So that method works better for that part of the problem. Now we're ready to solve for f sub a, which means we're going to move this to the other side, and I forgot the negative sign, can't do that, otherwise it won't work out, this is still negative. When we move to the other side, it becomes positive. When we turn the equation around, we get the force caused by the Achille tendon times 7 centimeters times the cosine of 5 degrees is equal to, that will become 800 newtons times 18 centimeters times the cosine of 15 degrees. Then dividing both sides by 7 centimeters and the cosine of 5 degrees, we're now ready to find out how strong the Achille tendon needs to be simply to hold one person in place on one foot like that. 800 newtons times 18 times cosine of 15 degrees divided by 7 divided by the cosine of 5 degrees. It turns out the Achilles tendon must be able to exert a force of 1,995 newtons. Let's convert that to pounds and see how big a force that is. We have pounds in the numerator, newtons in the denominator, 1 pound 4.448 newtons. So divide by 4.448 equals, that's a force of 448 pounds. Wow. And that's just to hold a person in place on one foot, like this. What if a person needs to jump up? Well, at that point, you also need to accelerate that object, the body, which would add an additional force in, the, in addition to the 448 pounds. When you're running or sprinting, landing on a foot, absorbing the landing of the, the body on the, onto the ground, and then propelling again into the air, we're talking about Achilles tendon forces roughly around 1,000 pounds or more for a person to be running on their toes. It's quite amazing how strong the human body is, the tendon and the muscles in the body as well. And it's, you need to be appreciative of what, how well the body is built, how strong the muscles and the tendon need to be in order to function properly. And that's how we use physics and torque to figure those things out.